Hello, welcome to the channel. Let's talk about the most popular combo from Dina Frips, the Iris TDC and the Pontus DAC. So we know that uh, from my previous video, uh, DDC is a digital to digital converter that allows you to convert the digital signal and output digital signal to an external DAC. So the external DAC we will talk about today is the Pontus DAC, where the two match pretty well together and it's one of the most popular combination that for customer who use USB primarily they will go for the DDC, the Iris DDC or the Hermes DDC with the Pontus DAC. So I've I have a lot of requests um, to ask me to take a video of the Iris DDC and the Pontus DAC configuration instead of the previous video that I've taken where I show how to configure the Hermes DDC and the Pontus DAC. So I thought of sharing this video to show you how you can configure the Iris DDC to work well with the Pontus DAC. Right, so this is a Iris DDC. It's pretty small size. Um, it's, it's it's the same size as the Aries DAC and uh, the Pontus DAC is of course a lot bigger than the Aries DAC. Right, let me flip it to the back to show you what are the connection available at the back. Oh, it's pretty heavy. Okay, so for the Aries DDC, it accepts only the USB input. So uh, if you have other sources that require coaxial input, optical input, or AES EBU input, then you will need the Hermes DDC. Otherwise, the Iris DDC is a perfect solution for customer who use computer or a streamer that comes with USB output. So it accept USB input. Two BNC connector at the back here is to connect the external clock input. So if you have Terminator 2 or the Terminator Plus, or if you have the Dynafrip Master Clock, the Terra or the Aether, you can connect those external clock output from those devices to these two input right at the back. The Iris DDC output Coaxial, optical, AES EBU, I2S over RJ45 and HDMI. Of course, for the Pontus DAC, it accepts the USB input, AES EBU input, optical input, coaxial input over BNC and RCA, and it outputs RCA and XLR. So again, Dynafrips DAC are true balance. So if your amplifier headphone M are true balance. It is, it is highly recommend to use the XLR output. So why do you need a DDC in this case where the Pontus DAC already comes with an USB input? So we know that um, the commercial computer on the market, USB output tends to be noisy. The purpose, the sole purpose of the DDC is to clean up the noise from the USB holes and output cleaner digital signal to the DAC. So we know that noise kills the joy of the music. So by adding this Iris DDC, the sound quality of the system will improve. But if you already have a pretty good quality streamer that outputs low jitter and low noise digital output from the streamer to the DAC, then in this case, the DDC might have just a little bit of differences in terms of sound quality. So it's perfectly up to you whether you want to go for a DDC to, to add in, in the system or you can just use the DAC. It, it is sort of a choice of you whether um, will you be using a good quality streamer or do you still very much prefer to use a computer to stream music because um, the computer may not be just using for streaming music. You may want to use it for other purposes like or, or for example watching YouTube channel, listening to the radio where and you use computer at work and you, you need to use the computer to stream music as you work, like me. So I have this set up on my desktop where I use a MacBook Pro to stream music most of the time and I use the DDC to clean out the USB noise and output the good quality digital signal to the DAC. So I need an Iris DDC in this case for my desktop setup. Okay, so what are the connections you can do for the Iris DDC to Pontus DAC? The cables that you need, I will recommend the customer to go for the HDMI i s The i s is arguably the, the, the best connection for the DDC and the DAC. So you may use the HDMI cable. Of course, you can choose other connection as well. For example, the coaxial cable. So you can connect the coaxial cable from the DDC to the DAC. So it's completely up to you. But uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about the HDMI i s connection. So let me connect this cable from the Iris DDC to the Pontus DAC. 
Again, the cable is a little bit stiff. I need to bend the cable a little bit, I think. Right, like this. So the RSQS connection for Iris DDC to the Pontus DAC. So RSQS is not a special cable. Um, it is making use of the HDMI cable because the HDMI cable on the market are pretty good quality. Um, the cable quality is good. The shielding is good. So most of the DAC or DDC on the market make use of the HDMI connector for RSQS purpose. Of course, we have this RJ45. The RJ45 um, over here, um, that there's no input for, there's no RJ45 input for the Pontus DAC, but uh, for Terminator 2 and the Terminator Plus, um, both of the two DAC comes with RJ45 I2S port. So if you have the two other DAC, you may consider to use RJ45. Right, um, I should flip it to the front and I'll be connecting the power cord and the XLR cable to this guy. And ah, oh, before I forget, so the computer will need to connect to this Iris DDC instead of the Pontus DAC, because the the chain will be the computer goes to the Iris DDC, Iris DDC convert the USB signal and output this digital signal to the Pontus DAC. So connect the USB cable to the Iris DDC. Right, and uh, the power cord wise, I'll I'll be flipping it over to connect connect in a moment. Okay. Let me position this guy so that you, can, you guys can see the LED at the front panel. It's pretty small size LED, so... Right. Okay, connect the power cord to the Iris DDC. The LED light should light up. Connect the power cord to the Pontus DAC. You should hear a couple of relay kicking sound. The relay kicking sound is really, really to send the correct voltage to the transformer. And I'll be using this XLR cable from Soma cable from the Pontus DAC to the Hestia preamp on my desk. Okay. So there's no power switch on the Iris DDC. As soon as you connect the uh, power cord, the DDC will power up. And you notice that there's, there's a small LED here. It says 44.1 because it is already connected to, to the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro uh, send the 44.1 signal or the default default um, sampling rate to the Iris DDC. And there's a small little button here for you to turn on the external clock input. Because we are not connecting anything to the BNC connector at the back, please leave the clock LED off. When leaving the clock LED off, um, the Iris DDC will be using its own internal TCXO, its temperature compensated crystal oscillator internally to process the digital signal. If you leave the LED on, the Iris DDC is expecting um, to have an external clock input at the two BNC connector at the back. So if you leave the uh, clock LED on, but you do not have the external clock input, the music will cut off. So we should leave the clock LED off and turn on the Pontus DAC. So by pressing this standby button once, um, the DAC will turn on, and we should select the US, the i s input. Hang on a second. Sorry, I need to bend my back because the pinhole LED is not visible at my angle here. Right, i s input selected. Okay, we know that there's no industrial standard for i s and Dina Frips has this feature to configure the i s pinout of the DD, DDC and DAC. But for the case of Iris DDC, the I2S pinout is fixed. So there's no configuration available to configure the I2S pinout for the Iris DDC. We need to configure the Pontus DSC I2S pinout to match with the Iris DDC. In theory, by default, the mode zero I2S pinout configuration on the Pontus DSC will match with the Iris DDC. But we do experience and some of the customer feedback that a certain HDMI cable doesn't work in mode zero. So my advice is really to, to turn down the volume of the preamp, turn down the volume of a headphone amp or, or any other device that you use in your system to minimal volume and play PCM and DSD um, using the tone test using the tone test uh, utility that is found on the Tiger or on the uh, Dynafrips website. We uploaded some tone test um, uh, utility for you to check the left-right channel for PCM and DSD as well as in-phase and out-of-phase for PCM and DSD to make sure that 
the left right channel for PCM and DSD playback uh, is fine for I2S configuration and the in phase and out phase PCM and DSD playback is fine for I2S configuration so if PCM and DSD playback are fine with the I2S configuration you have configured it means that the I2S pinout is matched so mismatch of I2S pinout will generate noise and the loud noise if the volume is not turned down to minimal may damage the loudspeaker so this is really the last thing that we want and if you want to use I2S this is the thing that you need to deal with but if you do not use I2S you may just um, connect the coaxial uh, optical or AES EBU cable from the DDC to the DAC and there's no complex I2S pinout configuration that you need to do so I just want to clarify that because I get this a lot why is it so difficult to use the uh, Dynaflip's DAC and DDC uh, it is not difficult in a sense it is because the I2S inherited the complexity of, of the configuration okay enough of I2S talk and let us play some tone test um, using this Tidal tone test utility it's an audio tone test utility found on Tidal and the volume is already minimal on my preamp and let me, let me play this um, left right channel test tone left left channel right, right channel center, center. so left. it plays fine for PCM right. so what if the I2S pinout is mismatched in the first place let me do a bad example test hit on the mute button to engage the mute mode so uh, mute button also engage uh, the configuration mode by pressing pressing a combination of button on the front panel by hitting the face button uh, momentarily more multiple times it toggles the I2S pinout mode where you can I should change hand where you can see that the 1x, 2x and 4x LED turn on and off so it changes the I2S pinout mode from mode 0 to mode 7 so there are 8 configurations that you can do and uh, what if the I2S pinout is wrong let me see let me test let me play the test tone again center Left. you hear noise right. from Center. both left and right channel and the noise is pretty annoying so this is hang on a second so this is what happened when the I2S pinout mismatch so it's always advisable to turn down the volume when you do this I2S configuration I do this I2S check from time to time just to make sure that both devices play fine for I2S so I do this in a weekly basis or monthly basis to check and to have a peace of mind that the I2S works fine. Right, so in theory, the mode 0 for Pontus DAC should match well with uh, Iris DDC. So let me hit on the mute button once to configure the I2S pinout to mode 0. So why is mode 0? Mode 0 is 1x and 2x, 4x LED off. 1x, 2x and 4x LED off is mode 0. So mode 0 should play back the PCM and DSD fine left. for both left right channel right. and in face and out of face so left right channel is fine Center. the next tone is in right. face right. in face in face uh, the image will be in the center out of face the music is playback in, in it's, it's like a surround effect so this play PCM fine how do we know it's PCM the DSD LED light is off, the DSD LED light, LED light is off. And I'll use this Audivana to upsample this, um, this PCM to DSD. And we'll see whether the DSD play fine for both left right channel and in face and out of face. Right. Let's give it a try. Left, right. DSD LED light up. DSC already light up. Left right. left right channel play fine. Left. In face. And out of face. Right. So we know that mode 0 for Pontus DAC works fine with the Iris DDC on my short HDMI cable. So if you have other HDMI cable that doesn't work well with this mode 0, please configure the I2S pinout of the Pontus DAC to match the PCM and DSD playback. Right, so I always recommend to use um, uh, software like Rune, software like Audivana, JRiver to playback music. Uh, these are the good software that allows you to 
use the DAC or the DDC in exclusive mode. So this exclusive mode uh, guarantee this bit, bit perfect operation from the computer or the streamer to the DAC where I also do not recommend uh, volume control because volume control is still lousy in the sense. I always like fixed volume and use a proper preamp in the channel, in, in, the, in the audio chain to attenuate the volume. Um, one of the reasons why I don't like digital volume control is a slight mistake in the volume control slider on the computer may render a maximum output of the DAC or the volume con directly to the power amp that you have or the active loudspeaker that you have and the excessive, excessive loudness of the, of the audio signal may damage the loudspeaker. By using a volume control preamp, you can be sure that the volume is controlled in a gradual manner. You will not have a maximum volume uh, right away as you as you slide the digital volume slide bar. So this is why I always recommend to use a proper preamp. A proper preamp like Hestia or the Hades match pretty well with the Pontus DSE. So do consider that. So I talked about most of the stuff already. So I hope this video helped. See you next time. Thank you.